Mr. David, for the talk time, and we've been talk talk one time all this little refugee, lo lay, and we've been looking all same time all this little refugee, been losing manus, na go lo lay, only been pining all same, this little old talk talk, na believe, and only been got long life, other side, lo detention center, you know, been come up good. The reality of their, you know, supposedly resettled life, um, and so no one has been there to actually hear their stories. So I was able to kind of, you know, firsthand experience what, their, what the situation is. And it's not a great situation at all. Um, they had been on Manus for about two and a half years. They are recognised refugees. And so this was the first group that had then been uh, resettled into Papua New Guinea, which is what the Australian and, and PNG governments are saying is the only option now for, for recognised refugees. In the time that I was there, two refugees actually went back to Manus Island um, and attempted to, to climb the fence of the detention centre to get back inside. Um, and so currently there's only three of the first group of six that are still there um, in PNG. And one is actually in Port Moresby now trying to get medical uh, assistance. So there's only two of the original six that are still in, uh, in lay. Mr. Fedele talked to all the same. All this is a refugee. He's been booking plenty heavy. Time only been stopped long community long lay. And we talked to all the same. All this is a refugee. is a stop long all the hotel. Not trying to find him walk. So it was extremely difficult situation um, of the six. One of them had got his own um, employment and five of the six uh, were given employment with a local building company and of those five, only one is now still working for the company. Over the course of, of weeks and months, um, all of the guys experienced different, uh, different problems that uh, were quite severe. Two of the refugees were, were, were held up at gunpoint twice in the street. Um, and also they were living in the, in the living compound of the company, the building company, and one night a group of rascal, armed rascals attempted to, to, to get inside their compound also. So currently there's only one that's still working for the, the building company, but none of them are now in any sort of permanent living um, arrangement. They're all living in hotels. That's all. Who said true is have a buy money long old hotel and um, all this little refugee is have a stop long in. Me been put him, this little ask him, me go back can long Mr. Fedeli. This is the question. Um, there just seems to be an enormous amount of, of money that is just being spent without any sort of regard, without any, um, I mean, ultimately it's probably us as Australian taxpayers that are paying for this, um, you know, as, I'm not privy to the deals that were done between Australia and Papua New Guinea at high level, at government level, but obviously, well, it's, it's, it's common knowledge that Australia has paid PNG a hell of a lot of money um, in aid, in support, in, in, in development funds and, and, and other money to be used um, to both support this uh, settlement process and, and different things. So I assume, you know, it, originally it's come from, from Australia and now obviously there's just enormous amounts of money that um, uh, is just being wasted, I can say. You know, I met one, one of the refugees that I met had been living in a hotel in Leh for almost three months. And what happens is um, they're just forgotten about in the sense that they're put into this hotel accommodation and then they're told it'll only be for one day or a couple of days, and then some days passed, some weeks passed, some months passed. There's nothing in place to actually um, to support these guys, so they're just indefinitely in uh, in this sort of accommodation. Mr. Fedele talked to all same close to all of the refugee. Yeah, he been Hamamas long Lucy Manus. That's all. Sample long all. He been go back long Manus long one him. All you know been like stop long lay. Or sem you me harim one plamanta sol na melong all this la sikis pla refugee and me been bungi molo lay is stop walk yet. The difficulty when talking about these sorts of things is lumping everybody into one big group or category and saying that they're refugees. I mean they are in they are refugees, but individually they all have their own ideas, goals, dreams and and opinions on things. So um, of, this, of the five guys that I spent time with, they all had their own different um, story. They, they all had their own different idea. Some were not wanting to be settled in, in Papua New Guinea um, and others were very um, happy and fortunate to be given an opportunity 
um, you know, of any sort. But the thing they all had in common was they all were very glad to be out of out of Manus, and and that meant that they were signing um, documents to originally get out of Manus because they thought that their re- resettled life would be much better than what they they experienced uh, in the camps. But the reality of their new resettled life was very very different, and so that forced three of the six to to return back. So one of them is still in employment. He, you know, is very appreciative of the opportunity, but he also understands that he's a player in this dysfunctional system. Plenty long all these people have been hamamas, all these little things have been caught. Now some people long all, he got like yet long come long Australia. That's all minister long immigration long Australia. But they that any been talk out all same. No got one play long all these little refugee by come long Australia. Me ask him, Mr. Fedeli, long this is a PNG Supreme Court thing thing. I think that myself and probably many others thought that that after that court case ruling that something would happen very quickly, but now that's been over a month, and um, my understanding is um, the situation on Manus has changed in the sense that some of the the, the camps are, are, are more open. But refugees and asylum seekers are still very much, or refugees are still kept in the camps. They have to come back by a certain time each each day and each night. The court case decision was based around them not having the the, the freedom as a as a basic human right. They still don't have that freedom. So even though think minor things have changed since that court case, there hasn't been the dramatic change in living situations that that I thought would happen and and that definitely should happen. PNG government has been talking all right, lo kissing all this la asylum seeker. Now, suppose only pine him all same, only refugee, true, true, all right, only can stop all get a long Papua New Guinea. That's all close to all I get a ground, long PNG, and me belong all Papa and Mama ground. Now, all people by Inona Pamamas, suppose government put him all this little refugee, long ground, long all. Now, this is like a map in Big Plawari, long, this is a thing thing, long Australian and Papua New Guinea government. Me ask him, Mr. Fideli, long this is a worry. I mean, I think it's not only a challenge, it, the whole plan, it's short-sighted to the extreme. It will fail. It is failing. And as Australians, we have been totally fooled. We have been told by our politicians that the debate and the argument is all about securing our borders and stopping people dying at sea. Now, they're two very extremely emotive topics, and they have now become what everybody is talking about when we're discussing these um, asylum policies of Australia. But what's being 100% forgotten is the actual practice of these policies in the sense that they're real human beings. Mr. Fedele talked to all them, and me like him through all people belong to Papua New Guinea. That's all, and me talk, and me no thing, there's a lot thing, thing, blow put him all refugee, low PNG, and me good blood, thing, thing. These are people that are coming from very different parts of the world that have very different ideas and beliefs and so forth, and we're putting them on an Papua New Guinea, which is a a country which is very dear to my heart, and I love the people of PNG, but it is not an appropriate place to be putting refugees. It is not an appropriate place to be putting people that require um, ongoing emotional and other support. Um, PNG is struggling very much with its own issues, with its own people. It has its own cultural way of life. It has its own way of ownership of land. I can't see where refugees are going to be fitting into the daily life of of Papua New Guineans. And this is not me saying this. This is based on many discussions that I've heard from from local people in PNG um, who are very open, very embracing people. But because of what many cultural and traditional ideas in PNG, not too sure how, how this is going to play out. Time Australia and PNG work lot time, pine him good blood road, blown all this little refugees, win him something by come up now. Me ask him, Mr. Fedele Ken. Fundamentally, Australia's policies must change. So we can have as much emotional support and we can have as much empathy and sympathy for the situation and for people, but if we continue with our policies, you know, the situation is going to, to continue. So the first policy that must be changed is, is this idea that, that no refugee that, or asylum seeker that comes to Australia will ever set f- 
fit, set foot in Australia or to be resettled. Um, we must 100% abolish using Papua New Guinea and Nauru or specifically as um, places where we're putting um, asylum seekers and then we must, must in a secondary um, phase, we must not be looking at Papua New Guinea and Cambodia and other places as places where we're going to permanently resettle um, recognised refugees. And Australia has an obligation um, legally, morally and ethically to take these people who are seeking asylum and to provide them, you know, the assistance. And, and I mean, Australia has the ability to do this. Australia, I mean, one black country where I pull up lo, all people from all Narpla country who said it been calm, lo, finding good place down, na only come lo, plenty country, lo, world. Also, lo, Europe, Asia, na too long Pacific region. Na Mr. Fidelity talk, I mean, no save lo, asking thing from Australia, lo, pass him do a blong in, lo, all these la, people. I think that we need to be having more discussions. I think that we need to be more open-minded. I think we need to understand that the the current society is based on um, multiculturalism and people, you know, my my grandparents are are migrants from Italy. They came here with nothing. They worked very hard. They were given opportunities. This is what these guys want. You know, they they want opportunities. They want to work. They they left for various different reasons, um, whether it was fleeing from war or for many different reasons. And and you come to to create a new life for yourself. You don't, you know, this rhetoric that we're told about people that are either stealing our jobs or or, or languishing on uh, uh, unemployment queues at the same time, it's just political spin. And so I really hope that, you know, Australia addresses these issues very, very soon in a much more humane way.